This is a 3.3 volt microcontroller board. If all I have to power it is USB, can I use voltage dividers instead of a regulator? In this episode of a No, wait. I'm gonna be very clear right now. No, you cannot use a resistor voltage divider as a regulator. However, there may be one other option to consider. So in this Adams tutorial, we'll see what happens when you try to use a voltage divider as a regulator. If you have not watched it already, I did a tutorial on dividers, but here's a quick review. Say we have a five volt source and connect two resistors in series. If we measure the voltage at the point between them, we'll get a ratio of the input voltage. Using 10K for R1 and 20K for R2, the V out will be 3.3333333 volts. It's really tempting to hook up this to a microcontroller, isn't it? Well, there's a couple of problems. The first is what happens when that five volt changes? Well, V out changes with it. The voltage divider isn't stable. Next, well, let's just hook it up and see what happens. When I push the button, the LED should light up, but it doesn't. Using my multimeter, we can check the voltage. Wait a minute, that's not even one volt. So what happened? Let's think about this for a second. If the board draws 60 milliamps, then that 60 milliamps has to go through R1. To get 60 milliamps through R1, you would need like 600 volts. So the resistor has to change. But to what value? You see, the next problem with the board is that it's an active load. So its current will always be changing. Remember that the voltage drop across a resistor is proportional to the current flowing through it. That linear change is the basis of Ohm's law. So we can't just pick a single resistor value for R1 or R2 that will make a stable 3.3 volts out. Now at the beginning I said there was one other divider option. You see, we need something to replace R2 that doesn't have this linear change problem. Something like a diode, but not just any diode, a special one. Diodes are unique because they appear as an open until enough voltage is applied to them. Then they turn on. Flip the diode around and current flow stops, at least until you reach the diode's reverse breakdown voltage. Normal diodes, like the 1N4001, aren't designed to operate continuously in reverse. Also, the reverse bias is like 50 to 100 volts. There is a type of diode that is designed specifically for this reverse bias circuit, and that's the Zener diode. Like normal diodes, a Zener's forward voltage can be around 0.7 volts. However, if we look at these Zeners, they have reverse voltages of 3.3, 5, 9.1, and 12 volts. Kind of interesting numbers, huh? Just like an LED, a Zener needs a current limiting resistor. What's cool is that when we look at V out of this divider, the voltage across the Zener stays around 3.3 volts. You see, this circuit takes care of the fluctuating voltage problem from the resistor divider. Now, we still have the problem that the current driving the microboard is also going through R1. So we need to do a little math to determine a proper value for R1. Zeners need about five milliamps to stay reverse bias. So if we know the load will draw 60 milliamps and the Zener needs five milliamps, then we can calculate something like 26 ohms. I have a 22 ohm resistor in my kit, so let's hook that up and see what happens. Well, technically the circuit is working. It resets and the push button, well, works. However, a quick look at the voltage and it's around 1.8 volts. Here's the thing, the Zener approach works well as long as the load is constant. This microcontroller board has a lot of active devices built into it. And so while it's powered, its load is constantly changing. Even with the stable voltage reference of the Zener circuit, it is still difficult to pick a value of R1 that will keep the circuit stable. So while this is a low cost way to regulate voltage, it isn't perfect. You have to be careful when you use it. It's best used when there is a very constant load. An ESP8266 is not a good fit for a Zener voltage divider. In fact, in most cases, a cheap linear regulator is simply a better option. Now, honestly, I couldn't even think of a time when to use a Zener as a regulator, so I'll ask you, have you ever used one before? And if so, in what circuit? When do you think it makes sense? Leave a comment, I'd like to hear from you. In review, a resistor voltage divider is good for situations with constant voltages and minimal current, like IO shifting between an Arduino and Raspberry Pi. The Zener divider is good for creating stable voltage references, like when you want to change the analog reference for an analog to digital converter. In a pinch, it can be used in some circuits as a minimal voltage regulator. If you aren't familiar with voltage regulators, you can check out my tutorials on them. 
I recommend starting with the linear regulator video. If you have questions, leave them here or drop by the Adams forums. There you'll find show notes and links related to this episode. And as always, remember if your circuit isn't working, just add ohms. Unless you're using a voltage divider as a regulator, in which case, don't do that. Stuck around to the very end. Cool. Well, I have a secret, but don't tell the comment section, okay? The board I'm using is a Huzzah 8266 breakout from Adafruit. And guess what? It has a voltage regulator built in. It's right there next to the 3.3 volt pin marked LDO. So yeah, it is very easy to use this board with five volts. I just didn't have anything else in the lab that ran on 3.3 volts. So that's why I use this one. Thanks again for watching.